Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're still in the realm of statics, looking at a problem that has to do with the decomposition of forces, just like before. We have the option of using the force triangle, we have the option of simply decomposing forces. Again, you can pick and choose whatever you feel more comfortable with, whatever is easier. We're going to do both ways here, in both methods, to be sure that we're exploring the different ways of doing this. Let's start with the force decomposition method. So, problem statement reads, a stake is being pulled out of the ground by means of two ropes as shown. Knowing that alpha is 30 degrees determined by trigonometry A, the magnitude of the force P, so that the resultant force exerted on the stake is vertical, and B, the corresponding magnitude of the resultant. So the first part here is, what is P, right, what is this force P, if the resulting force, that is the combination of P plus that 120 newtons, is vertical? In other words, if by combining these two forces, my resulting force is only going upwards. Yet, in other words, so that the two horizontal components cancel each other. So they're, they're, that is, they are equal in magnitude but have opposing directions, right? That's what that special sentence is saying, right? That's what this, this spe specifically this part here, the resultant force at stake is vertical, right? So this vertical is a keyword here, all right? And then the corresponding magnitude with the resultant, that is, okay, if we then combine these two, what does that look like? So let me go ahead and place these two here. Let me change the color for this one. So we have P let's place them down here like so. So we have P and we have um, 120, right? So we have 120 Newtons here and then we have P here. What's the resulting force? Well, the resulting force is I can just do this one more time and I can just put the force P over here. I can get rid of this. This is a result of force right here, right? The combination of those two, right? In our case specifically, we know that this combination has to be vertical. Why? Because we want it to be so, right? So we're actually constructing P so that it is vertical. So there's two ways of sol solving this, right? One is we get P over here. We get P, one side of the triangle is P. The other side is the result that I'm trying to find out. The other one is 120 and I solve using the force triangle. The other way is to actually decompose these forces, right? And that's another method of doing, and that's the first point, the first way of doing it, right? I'm going to do it like that. So what I'm going to do specifically is the following. I'm going to decompose P into Px, and I'm going to decompose 120 into the, I guess, 120x, which should be consistent with the nomenclature, right? And we happen to know the angles here, right? We happen to know that this here is 25 degrees, and we happen to know this here is 30 degrees, okay? So therefore, the sine of 30, right, the sine of 30, sine of 30, will just be the opposing sign, which is this one here, which is the same as a px, right? So p equals px divided by the hypotenuse, which in this case is p, right? And this other side here, I'm going to do kind of the same thing, right? I'm going to say the sine of 25, in this case, of 30, is the 120x, not the best name that I really think about it. Let me, just, let me just call it f of x divided by the hypothesis, which is 120. Okay, so note how from this I can automatically calculate what is this force fx if I want to, right? I can calculate fx. And here, the unknown here is going to be p and px, but if fx and px are the same, then there's only one or not, right? And that's precisely what we're trying to do, right? We're saying that the sum of forces, the sum of forces in the x or the horizontal is zero. What are the two forces? Well, we have one pushing to the right, one pushing to the left, so they're opposing each other. Therefore, the sum of forces is my px minus my, what do you call it, f of x, right? So if this is true, then they have to be equal. Therefore, px needs to be equal to f of x. And if that's true, then I can basically substitute the two equations here, right? I can substitute P of X by sine of 30 times P. 
they can substitute f of x by 120 times sine of 25. Right? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Right? So I'm going to say the sine of 30 times p has to be equal to the sine of 25 times 120, which means that p is my only unknown here and means that p is just the sine of 25 divided by the sine of 30 times 120 newtons. And obviously the units is going to be the same units as the force to 120, which is given in newtons. So this is also going to be newtons. And I get here approximately 101.43, 101.43 newtons, right? And that's my resultant force. That's what the answer is looking for. Is that A or B? What is the uh, the magnitude of P, right? So that it's vertical. So it's that, there you go. That's the magnitude of P right there, right? 101. So what are we saying? We're saying the following. To be able to counter this 120 force here with a force that's 30 degrees, right? To, in respect to the vertical, um, to the vertical line, we need this force to be 101.43, I think, right? Newtons. Okay, if we do that, then the two horizontal components cancel each other out, and the resulting force is a force that is completely vertical because there's no components, horizontal component anymore. Okay, so then the the rest of the question is asking, okay, and uh, by the way, what is the corresponding magnitude of the resultant? Well, to be able to do that, now we have to do the two other components that we haven't talked about, right? So one of them is the y component, uh, so fy, right? And on this side here, we have the y component on p, sorry, so py. And to do that, let me go ahead and copy this so that we're not in a, making this overwhelming in terms of space. Take advantage of the infinite space we have here. Boom, 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 boom. All right, cool. Okay, we know that the, the resulting force is going to be the combination of these two forces. So the resultant, let's call it... Uh, resultant force will be PY plus FY. Why is it plus? Because they're both pointed in the same direction, right? And how do I calculate them? Well, I'm going to use cosine, right? Because the cosine here, the cosine of 25 is simply the F of Y divided by the hypotenuse, which is again, is 120. 120. And over here, the cosine of 30, cosine of 30, is this is my triangle here, right? So here I have my px and I have my py. Note how the cosine is simply the adjacent one divided by the hypotenuse, which is my p, right? My p. So therefore, the cosine, get rid of all that, the cosine of 30 is equal to my py divided by my p. Okay? Now, what am I after here? I'm after. Um, the resulting force, which is a sub of PY and FY. I can calculate FY, I can calculate PY, all good. I have everything I can possibly need to be able to solve this. All right? So to do that, um, I'm first going to calculate, mm, let's, we might just put everything into one equation. So if I want to, I can do, okay. So FY is just the cos uh, 120 times the cosine of 25 degrees as PY is simply P, which is 101.43, is it 43? Make sure. Yeah, 43 times the cosine of 25, uh, 30 degrees, right? So if I'm interested in FR, FR is simply the sum of these two, then it's as simple as summing these two up, right? So here we note that uh, these are going to be flipped, right? So let's put this one here. We'll end this one over here. So they are it can sense, and it's basically the sum of these two fellows here. Okay, what is the sum of those two? Uh plug these this in, sum it up. I got 196.59. So let's go to approximate that to 196, and it keeps going, right? Let's go ahead and approximate that to 196.6. 
196.6. Obviously, the unit is, in, is newtons. Why is it newtons? Because this is a newtons. We're multiplying by something that doesn't have any units. This is a newtons. Multiply by something that doesn't have any units. So newtons plus newtons is newtons. Um, once again, let's get make sure we're getting ourselves plenty of space so that we're not anybody confused. Okay, I left the top part of the off. We are. Okay, so this is the resultant force. It's a vertical force. It's pointing upwards, and it's 196.6 newtons. And that's it for the problem, right? Part A is asking, what does P have to be? What is the magnitude of force P, this force here, or this force here, which is the same uh, here, right? So that um, the resulting force is vertical. To do that, we have to decompose this force P into its horizontal component, Px, and we made the horizontal component equal to the horizontal component of the force that we did know, the 120, right? Because they need to cancel each other out so that the resulting force is vertical. We're canceling out the horizontal component. Once we did that, we we're able to calculate P, right? We're able to calculate P because the only unknown is then P. We did that, we calculated P. P is 101. Beautiful. Next up is, okay, now that you know P, what is the resulting force? Well, the resulting force is going to be the combination of my 120 plus my 101.43. They are in different angles and all, but I don't need to worry about that because I know that the two X components are cancel each other out. We actually made it so that that would happen. And the only resulting force is going to be the combination of both the vertical components of P and 120 respectively, right? So we just had to calculate what is going to be these vertical components. To do that, we came up with these two equations here, one for the vertical component on F and one for the ver vertical component on P. And then we summed those two up, and that gave me the resultant force after I have accounted for everything. All right, so like I said, this is one, one of the ways of doing it. The other way is to use a force slide. Well, let's go ahead and do a video on that too. Um, both are correct. Obviously, it's really a matter of which one you feel comfortable with. Um, I find that force triangle is good in the beginning when you're getting a sense of things and when you want to use a lot, lot of signs when that's, you know, popping in front of you, that's a great way of you, uh, using it. The other way, the other good thing is when you're trying to find out uh, specific angles and then a lot of cosines can help. In other instances, I find that um, decomposing the force is easier. That's for me. That's my personal opinion. But again, it's up to you. Forever, you're going to use both, right? Both are going to be always, always, always going to be um, applicable and always going to be correct. So if this video was helpful, consider giving it a like. If you um, haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do so. And if you have any comments, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to address them and we'll talk to you.